What's up, dude? Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I'm wearing absolutely no makeup today because uh, we got some snow and I had to keep going outside and moving snow and wearing a hat and it just, honestly, on days when it's like a snow day kind of and I'm staying home, I prefer not to wear makeup. So you get a makeup free me today. <laughs> um, today's case really isn't a true crime case per se. Somebody does end up passing away, but it's just an interesting story and it's not really talked about like i looked it up and there's not a ton of youtube videos about it so i thought that we would just talk about this person and kind of in a huge way the legacy that they ended up leaving britney cecil was born on march 20th 1988 to david and jody cecil the family lived in west alexandria ohio britney was an avid sports fan and she herself played soccer she played on a team called the Orange Crush that made it to the state tournament when she was only 11 years old. After the team qualified for the tournament, the mayor declared that day Orange Crush Day. Brittany later went to Twin Valley South Middle School. She was a cheerleader, student council member, as well as an honor student. So not only was she athletic, she was also very intelligent. On March 16th, 2002, Brittany was watching the Columbus Blue Jackets play the Calgary Flames. The tickets were an early gift from her dad for her 14th birthday. During the second period, with only 12 minutes, 10 seconds to go, Espen Knutsen, um, a Blue Jackets player, attempted a, uh, a slap shot that was deflected by the Flames' Derek Morris. The puck went over the glass that was behind the net and it struck Brittany in her left temple. It happened at the Nationwide Arena in Columbus, Ohio on Saturday night. Halfway through the second period of a game between the Columbus Blue Jackets and the Calgary Flames, Blue Jacket forward Espen Knudsen takes this slap shot. It deflects off a Calgary defender's stick and hits 14-year-old Brittany Cecil, who is sitting near the top of the section. She's seen here with another fan who presses a jacket to Brittany's face. Brittany is standing and appears to be okay. Then the game continues. The play carried on since the players on the ice had no idea that anybody was injured. She sat fairly high up because if the puck made it over the glass, like she was sitting higher up in the stand. So um, either they just didn't notice it or didn't, you know, hear anything like people saying like oh you know so they didn't know that anybody was injured even though Brittany had a skull fracture she still managed to walk to a first aid station before she was taken by ambulance to the columbus children's hospital so she was looked at able to walk um the only visible injury that she had was a gash on her forehead which i mean head wounds do tend to bleed and split open pretty easily but i mean the skin on your head and face is relatively thin so it just bleeds you know Brittany suffered an initial seizure at the hospital and then she was admitted after they realized like oh this is more than just a head wound the next day it seemed like she was recovering both communicative and ambulatory which means that she was able to walk on her own i think that's a big thing in hospitals is if you can walk and you know like communicate like in this case here, it's like, oh, okay, you're good to go. Like clearly there's no other signs of something else going on with you. She also didn't complain about any pain or dizziness, which is a little bit odd because I would think that there would be a lot of pain and maybe not dizziness, but I mean like a headache for sure. Like a hit like that, oh my gosh. However, Brittany had a torn vertebral ar artery that a CT scan unfortunately did not catch. The vertebral Braille artery is a major artery that runs in your neck. Hi. Sorry, my dog just wanted, he likes joining in on videos and stuff. <laughs> this is my dog, Louie. You can see his head over my desk, but a lot of times when Jake comes in, you're unable to see him because he's so short. Anyways, so because of the torn artery, she suffered severe clotting and swelling of the brain. On March 18th, Brittany came down with a fever and lost consciousness. Consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> Nearly 48 hours after getting struck by the puck, Brittany unfortunately passed away. It was 5.15 p.m. on March 18th, 2002. She was only two days away from her 14th birthday. At Brittany's funeral, the Blue Jackets general manager, Doug McLean, um, spoke on the team's behalf. The Thursday after the incident, the Blue Jackets held a moment of silence for Brittany at their next 
home game. The team wore Britney's initials B and C on their helmets for the rest of the season. The players involved in the, I don't know what you would call it, the play, the the two players that were involved with the slap shot and the deflecting and the ultimately the incident that ended up killing Britney. Um, they expressed extreme remorse after Britney's death. Derek Morris said, you try to say it happens all the time, but you can't. I don't know how many times pucks get deflected over a glass, but it doesn't make it any better. You can always say it's not my fault, but you always feel like it is a little. Espen Knudsen was given the option of sitting out of the next game by Blue Jackets coach, but he chose to play and told reporters, I think about it all the time. It was a terrible accident, and I cannot get it off my mind. In 2010, Espen met with Brittany's family, which in turn gave closure sort of to both parties. I mean, at the end of the day, nobody purposely did that. It just, it really was an unfortunate accident that you hope will never happen again, but... I don't know. I I mean, if, if if I was one of the players, yeah, I would always feel like, oh my gosh, that was my fault. I did that. You know, but really, accidents are just that. They're accidents. After the incident, the NHL spent several months studying the environment of the arena as well as the stands and how they could lessen the risk of high-speed pucks entering the spectator areas. In the end, League Commissioner Gary Bettman ordered that a mandatory safety net be put up above the glass, behind and to the sides of both ends of the rink by at least five feet in all arenas. And now this is actually something that has been adopted by other like hockey leagues. They've started doing this now as well like well when I say now I mean like back then when they first started doing it then other hockey leagues began doing it as well just as a safety precaution. Britney's family filed a lawsuit against the NHL. They settled out of court for 1.2 million in April of 2004. I think that in some cases when a company gets sued when there is a lawsuit, I think that, now I can't say for sure, genuinely I can't, but I think that the company almost encourages it because they know what happened, it was such an accident, and somehow they want to help the family not make things better because this isn't something that can be made better, I guess, um, because the family's daughter passed away. But they do it just more in a way of like, we want to help you because of this tragic accident. I can't say for sure that that's what happened here, but if they settled out of court and for $1.2 million, I don't know, I just kind of feel like maybe to some degree too, the NHL was like, yep, totally fine. We will absolutely pay. This was a tragedy and we want to help. That's just my own personal thoughts, but I genuinely, I don't know. It's just um, speculation totally on my part. The Brittany Nicole Cecil Memorial Scholarship Fund was created in her honor and it collects donations at every Blue Jackets home game, which I really think is an amazing thing and I'm sure that the family loves that that's part of her legacy as well, that there's a scholarship fund in her name. Brittany was the first person to be killed by a puck at an NHL game. Pucks can fly at speeds of more than 100 miles per hour, which I did not know. That's faster than pitches thrown at MLB games. The hospital issued a statement on behalf of Brittany's family. The statement said that her parents donated Brittany's organs in hopes that others will be blessed as much as they were by her life, which I think is really amazing too. Donating organs is such a, I don't know, I just think it's a really cool thing that people do. I'm an organ donor myself because after I'm dead, clearly I don't need them and if somebody else could get use out of my liver or something, have at it. I really don't care. I had a science teacher actually one time that told us that he was not an organ donor and I thought that that was super interesting because I was like, but you're a science guy. Like, I don't know. I thought that was strange, but just a little tidbit for me. Um, I know that, like I said, this isn't a true crime video. This one really isn't, but I thought it was very interesting that this is the story of why those safety nets are now put up at NHL hockey games and even in other arenas you see them as well. It's unfortunate that someone had to pass away for them to do um, or to put up a safety measure like that, but at the end of the day, I can't imagine how many people these nets have saved um, just after the league 
learned from this one incident so even though it's incredibly sad that Brittany passed away at least something good in a way came out of it I mean a few good things came the scholarship came they put up the safety nets saving countless other people's lives as well so I just think that that's a really really cool thing uh, that is it though for me today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and if you have anything that you know about this case, please be sure to put it down in the comments uh, down below. There wasn't a ton of information about this, which I think is really unfortunate because it's just something really important that I feel like happened and it's sad that no one talks about Brittany. I learned about this through a TikTok. So that being said, please subscribe to my channel and I will be back tomorrow with another True Crime Courier video. Bye guys.